Okay, good evening and welcome to the Joint Scrutiny Budget Meeting of Tamworth Borough Council. It's six o'clock and I'll open the meeting at Agenda Item 1, Appointment of the Chair. Um, I'd like to invite nominations uh, for a chair for this meeting and I'll need a proposer and a seconder for the nominations. So have we got anybody that wants to nominate? Thank you, Councillor Cook. Nominate Councillor Carol Dean. Thank you. That's a, a mover for Councillor Carol Dean to chair the meeting. Can I have a seconder? Happy to second that. Thank you, Councillor Claymore. Have any other nominations? Okay, so we'll just move to the vote then. Um, well, not if you don't. No, not if you don't want. Can I nominate Councillor Chris Bain, please? Okay, is there a seconder, please, for Councillor Chris Bain? Is that Councillor Pro uh, Councillor Clark? <laughs> ben Clark, thank you. So Councillor Chris Bain has been nominated. Is there any other nominations for post chair? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's no other nomination, so we'll take a vote on um, Councillor Chris Bain to chair this meeting. Uh, all those in favour? Yep, thank you. And all those against? And any abstentions? No. Nope. Okay, that's carried then. So, Councillor Bain, I'll now hand over to yourself uh, to chair the rest of the meeting. Thank you. And some have greatness thrust upon them, don't they? Um, can I welcome everybody to this, the uh, joint scrutiny budget meeting, and a reminder to members that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded onto YouTube. Um, I see from the agenda that we have apologies from Councillor Jones, uh, Thompson, Bailey, Wardrop and Kingston. Do we have any other apologies? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, Councillor Ben Price is not feeling very well. I do sympathise with him at this moment. Um, minutes of the... It's, yes. Uh, I wasn't sure if in your list said there, Councillor Pritchard and Councillor Oates. If not, then they need nope, to be No, they're noted. not on my list. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Are there any other apologies? Now, according to my chair's notes here, it says minutes of the previous minutes. That's probably minutes of the previous meeting, is it? Um, looking to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 25th of January 2023 and ask for a mover of those minutes. Councillor Cook. Happy to move, Mr Chairman. Thank you. And a seconder? Well, we weren't here. You weren't no, here. You can't find it. Okay. Councillor Harper. Thank you. All those in favour? As well. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. <coughs> Item four is declarations of interest. Are there any interest to be declared at this point? There being no interest declared, I move on to item five, which is the draft budget, medium term financial strategy. And I would ask the leader of the council to present this report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on your appointment. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so as you said, this is the draft budget and medium term financial strategy for 2024, 25 to 28, 29. Um, the purpose this evening is to approve the draft 
midterm financial strategy as per Appendix 1. To consult with you all in here, the Joint Scrutiny Committee of Budgets and receive your feedback on four key areas. The general fund revenue budget and council tax for 24-25, the housing revenue account budget for 24-25, the capital programme general fund and HRA, and the midterm financial strategy. Um, it was reviewed by cabinet recently um, and <clears throat> key areas to call out based on these budget assumptions, headline figures for the next year, uh, general fund net cost of services of 8.24 million, a transfer of 1.21 million from general fund balances, um, a transfer of 1.045 million to HRA balances, uh, general dwelling rent increases will be increased by 7.7%, which is CPI plus one, um, a 24-25 general fund capital program of 1.858 million, uh, 6.1 over the five years and the 24-25 housing capital program of 11.042 million and that's 45.436 over five years. Um, I'll take the report as read. There is just one thing to highlight which is that in this report at the time that it was issued um, there were two models in there for council tax increases. One was five pound um, and one was 2.99 percent. Um, we have since remodeled this and what will be proposed at the end of February is a two 0.95% increase um, that changes it from five pounds per annum increase to five pounds 81 so a difference of 81 pence per annum for a band D and uh, I'll hand it over thank you here are some pictures that match well that's annoying <laughs> I'm pleased to hear about the pictures are there any questions This could be a world record meeting if there isn't one. Uh, I just had one point as well. Just um, for anyone in the public that is watching, obviously we've had uh, everyone in this room has had several workshops on this already, had sides for it already, had input to it already. Um, so sometimes if someone's watching and there, there aren't as many questions or comments, it's because this has been reviewed many times by everybody uh, in this room. Thank you, Councillor Jay. That was a point worth making, is that this has been under consideration uh, for some time. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Chairman. i start with a comment, then move into some questions. Uh, firstly, to echo my uh, comments uh, last time we spoke about this budget, uh, given the financial climate and seeing around the country, no matter what political colour the council is, how many councils are really starting to struggle at the end of uh, the government austerity that we've seen. So uh, congratulations to Cabinet and the officers for it being balanced. You know, that is an achievement in itself, so I'll re-echo that. You know, it's, having struggled with these papers long enough myself, I know we're a difficult and tiring job it is, so just put it out there for the officers and the Cabinet again. Congratulations on that part. However, I do, I do have a few questions about it and a few concerns that will probably manifest themselves through February. <laughs> Firstly, if we look on page 16, uh, we see a note that the, the five highest risks facing the council are listed below. En energy supply crisis, cost of living crisis, high inflation, food supply crisis, and cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. Now, I would bet, you know, the majority of them would also resonate with individual residents out in our estates in Glasgow, in Stony Delphi, in Hamilton, etc., etc., but I don't see anything in this budget that's extra on top of what we've historically done that attacks the cost of living crisis. This, this, these are serious times. We were in this council chamber uh, just last evening and obviously a member of the public um, let their voice be heard that they couldn't afford to put their heating on at home, but we're all sat in a very warm chamber. If we're not listening to these voices, we're not doing our job. I don't see this budget doing enough yeah, great. We've got some more outdoor events. We're investing in the assembly rooms. It seems to be very town-centric. Uh, All important things. Don't deny that. But I don't see where we're going as a council at extra mile or trying to face the challenges that our residents are facing in this budget. It seems a very council-central budget, not a service delivery to what residents need budget, and that concerns me slightly. Um, I've started a process of doing some research, you know, on how cost of living crisis is it in our estates, and I'm hoping to, you know, start sharing that with colleagues through February, because I would like to see this budget actually scale back on the outdoor events slightly, which are important, don't get me wrong, and actually let's face the challenge that's in front of us. 
we need to invest possibly a little bit more in our voluntary sector and commission our voluntary sector to attack some of the problems that are going on in our society, like cost of living, like skills gaps. And that, that's my concern with this budget. It's great that it's balances. It's great that, you know, we can get the council tax targets in. It's great that we understand where the business rates are, but I don't see what we're actually doing for those that are really struggling in society on top of what we've historically done. And I just look for a comment from the leader about has that been considered through this process? I mean, it was certainly borne out in the, um, the consultation uh, that obviously we did with residents when we got those responses in, but I don't see where this budget has actioned those thoughts. And that's just my uh, hope of the comment from the leader, Mr. Chairman. Do you want to pick that up, Councillor Jay? Of course, yeah, thank you. Obviously, it's a very valid point. Um, I think we all agree with that. Um, I would just say that <clears throat> it you know, may be buried in there, but there are probably three key areas that address what you've raised there. Maybe they don't go as far as you, you're referring to there, but they're certainly in there. <clears throat> there are additional grants and funding for third sector, firstly, and we know that has a multiplier effect on people in, the, in society, much more than a council could do itself. So that's in there. Um, there's the council tax reduction scheme, which has gone through the committees. So the lowest earners, those that need the most, are going to be exempt from council tax. That is in there. Um, then obviously in the HRA capital programme, um, there's quite a lot in there around energy efficiencies, insulations, etc. So again, to reduce those bills for people. So I'd say they're the three key areas that we have had this same conversations, what you've raised there. And they're the three big items to, to try and cover that. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor Cook? Thank you. Councillor Dean. Okay. Um, but I, I, I just, because it's Cabinet giving a response to the budget, um, I, I'm sorry, but I, I don't agree that it's a valid point at all. Um, just because it's not in the budget this year, it doesn't mean it's not in the budget that we always have and continue to deliver on year on year um, so looking for new things when we're already doing a lot in, con in conjunction with our voluntary sector um, it is um, it's just a red herring I'm afraid you, you're bringing things up that um, you're bringing up a point that is completely invalid um, we already are doing what we can to help residents that are struggling and what I announced last night the funding from the um, COVID outbreak management fund We've got 250 grand to help residents. There's lots of things in there. And you were present last night, so you heard all of that. Mm -hmm. So you're just trying to make a political point, I'm afraid, and it doesn't work. I think what's being talked about here is a change of emphasis rather than anything else. Councillor Cook. Yeah, just come back to Councillor Summers. I did say in my um, speech before I asked my question, yes, we've historically done oh, so much, and we still continue to do it. What I'm saying is the, the citizen survey we did, the budget consultation we did, highlighted that the people like to see us do more, and we haven't done more. That, that's the point I'm making. This isn't a political point. I'm answering the residents' consultation. Yeah. I've not moved any motions to change anything. I'm not playing politics yet. Uh, but you know, my, my point is valid. We, we're here to scrutinise the budget you're proposing. This is me asking questions and scrutinising it. If you disagree, that's fine, but I'm not making political points. I've never come to a scrutiny committee and made a political point in my life. That's not what scrutiny is about. Councillor Dean, and then I'll ask you to come back if you will, Councillor Joe. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to echo most of the points that Councillor Cook has made. This is the bit that really worries me. I've, I've had a, an issue for a while about how much we spend on outdoor things and what we get back for it. Last night, we spoke about the event that happened on Saturday that we hadn't done anything about and how good that had been for the town. But nobody had spent any money to do that. The council hadn't had to spend any money to make that happen. But there were lots of um, venues throughout the town that had benefited from it. My own opinion would be, can, and I've said this before, can we not look at, if this is so good for certain venues within the town, should they not be looking to help us run those things and pay in towards them? There, there's an issue here of... It's council money that's going on these things. How many people in the town actually benefit from it? And when we've got people who are really struggling with heating, eating, all sorts of things, all sorts of services that they're looking for that we may be able to help with. Yes, we may do them now, but there's always more that we can do. And it's about where you put your priorities. 
Perhaps the chair. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just to, just to reiterate, obviously, we, we, you mentioned there that we're not doing anything different. <clears throat> so are those three that are raised, I'm going to repeat them, um, the three that I raised earlier. Um, one item I forgot to mention earlier, but it is in there, and that is an increase to the disabled facilities grants from 250k to 700k. Um, that is within this budget as well, and that is significant. Um, <clears throat> regarding the events, obviously, it, it can be sometimes hard to calculate the impact of an event, quite right. But the way I see that is these aren't massive amounts into those events, and it is money that comes into our local economy. People come from outside or people from in the town come and spend their money locally. That goes to local business owners. Now, what are local business owners? Generally residents. They're not on mega money. They're not multimillionaire CEOs. It's generally, you know, money in their pocket and for families, and they create jobs which supports lower-earning families. Generally, they're lower-earning jobs. So <clears throat> there is that to bear in mind. Um, and also, having free events um, can, can take away a significant burden on lower-earning families. You know, there is something for them to do with their children. Um, you know, I've been one of them. I remember growing up in Glasgow Heath. You, there wasn't that much to do. Um, you had to go and make your own entertainment. If you had all these events then, and my mum or sisters could have brought me down there for free, I mean, imagine the impact that would have had on me as a child. So I think we can't just look at the, the financial sometimes, why we 10, 20,000 we've seen here, and think, what else could we do? It's all those other impacts on <coughs> local jobs, local business owners, money in the economy, and things for underprivileged people to do for free. So I think you've got to look at it in the, in the whole. Thank you. Just one small comment. Part of my thing there was looking if we can get sponsorship for some of these events so that the co cost is shared and maybe some of these people who are benefiting might like to do a little bit. Of, you know, it would only need a few of them to be putting some sponsorship in. Come back on one specific point. <clears throat> yeah, you're the chair. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, definitely we, we always need to look at innovative ways of doing things. We saw with the event at the weekend, um, you know, a very small uh, input from the council with some crowd control, etc. It was a massive event put on. What can we learn from it? What can we capitalise on it? Can we do anything similar and, um, you, you know, in the future? Absolutely. So that is something we're going to look at, but that's, that's not for now because that's just happened. Um, but absolutely, we need to look at innovative ways in the future as well, yeah. Totally agree with that sentiment. Councillor Smith. Yeah, uh, Councillor Jay largely echoed what I was going to say, but essentially we've got to think about, you know, the town. We've got to invest in the town. One of the ways we can do that is through the kind of events that we have been doing and what we're projected to do. Um, I, you know, when I had my business um, in the town, uh, the impact of local events, whether that be the fireworks or, you know, some of the events that were happening on the castle grounds, make a huge amount of difference um, to my, myself. And it will be the same for many of the businesses. If we want these buildings occupied, if we want to drive inward investment, we have to get more and more people into the town. We need to see it as a destination. That's going to have a knock-on effect to those businesses that are then going to operate and pay further taxes. So we have to think about investing in our town and as councillor jay said many of these um events additional events they don't necessarily cost a huge amount of money but they do make a huge amount of difference trouble is you can't quantify it you know you talk to an accountant it's very very difficult to actually put a sum on the return of these sorts of things you have to almost just believe in it um, but i i honestly from my point of view um, from the experience that i had running a business in the town it, it made a huge huge difference Can I just make one quick point uh, from the chair based on what both you and Councillor Jay have said is, is that I understand about inward investment into the town. I think the question is directed to how does that reach the groups who don't directly benefit from that? How would that chap who was in here last night directly benefit from what, we, what we've heard here today? And I find it difficult to see what that mechanism is. Yeah, I think it's similar to what I said earlier, and um, and that is there's already a council tax reduction scheme, big tick. That's the lowest earning. Um, there's all of the investment in H in in uh, properties, so insulation, efficiency, etc. 
I mean, when you look at the figures, <clears throat> that is massive money going into those. The events in comparison, I'm not trying to belittle it here, because it's, it's tiny money compared to what's going in there. But because that's in the capital program, it can often be, you can over, uh, often see past that, but it, it is in there. There's, a, there's millions of pounds going into that. And that is for those people. Well, I'm sure the person last night is grateful for that, but they still can't put the heating on. Councillor Cooper. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair, thank you. Um, I think um, I, I'm just going to come back on something that um, the uh, Deputy Leader said about believing um, that the, those secondary benefits are there from events. And, and for me, I don't think you have to believe, just go out and try find a space in a restaurant uh, when the fireworks are on, try and find a, a spot in a pub uh, when the when the summer events are on. It, it's there to see. If you get out and have a look, it's there to see. And what that does is that then it generates that secondary income so that young people, that, uh, quite rightly what the leader said, the, the young people at the uh, bottom end of the pay scale, they get a chance to get out there in the local town keep the transport costs down, work in the local town, in the local economy, and then that then um, brings, brings the money home, which obviously then pays taxes. I think it's really rudimentary uh, economics to suggest that we can turn the money off on, 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 a, on, a, on a budget line item like events and then pass it to somebody else and, and see a better benefit. Um, we, history dictates that actually that doesn't happen. Um, very simple economics. Yeah doesn't happen um it, it doesn't exist um there are there are things in there you know you know the uh, my, my colleagues got a long list of, of of things in there to there to help people such as gentleman that was in here last night I mean, you know heart goes out to people who can't you know who, who don't have the money to to heat their own absolutely but there's two main uh, major players that that's you know in, inflation and the opportunity to work if we're providing one of those that you the, some great people in here we, we can't really affect inflation however it's right to risk it because that's 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 what eats away at the at the money in your pocket and your savings but what we can do is we can try and help with um opportunity with employment and that's what we're doing by, by investing in in events um getting local uh, people to uh, to get involved with catering and all the other things just like we saw last summer um, with Spudman down at the catering, uh, the catering parts, some of the events, and other local caterers, and that's what it's about. It's about giving people that uh, that, that, that op opportunity to go out and earn. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, I've been looking. I've been looking through the budget, and it looked like the money going down every single year at an alarming rate, from what I can see. My question is on the events. Had there been a cost analysis on like the benefits of that or town? Because I question why are you increasing the firework expenses and other events expenses, and not to keep it the same right now or reduce them to lower the weight on to council, right, sir? I mean, I do have to say, uh, Councillor Adams, that, that it's, the point has already been made that cost-benefit analysis is extremely difficult to quantify on this. I, th I think that's been dealt, but your point is noted, and we will pick it up a little bit later. I've got uh, a, a few people to speak. Councillor Summers. Yeah, if I may, if this gentleman who, who um, totally sympathises with him, he's going to keep being, being brought up as a, as a kind of like, um, you know... Um, sorry? Yeah, uh, if he's going to keep being brought up, um, I mean, I hope that um, we directed him properly and didn't just send him away with sympathy and absolutely no um, use. It's on our website, and if you Google Heat Tamworth um, or call 0800 0432 815, then uh, there's grants available, practical advice, financial assistance, uh, home improvements. It's all there. So we keep going on about this guy who can't afford his heating. None of us in this room are particularly well off or rich. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not. But at the end of the day, everybody out there is struggling. And uh, there is help out there if they want to get it. Reducing the cost of the fireworks isn't going to make any difference to that guy trying to heat his home. But it is going to make, you know, a lot of difference to the people who want to, you know, distract themselves from their everyday lives and you know, enjoy something for once. And I made the comment before at uh, one of these meetings where it was suggested we flipping well stop the fireworks for environmental issues. I th it seems to me people want to suck the joy out of everything, um, and and you know bring us back to uh, you know cold, depressing, 
uh, lives that we never have any fun in. And, you know, the Borough Council providing some events like fireworks, what what difference is that going to make to, to the guy who can't heat his home? Absolutely none. If we didn't put it on, it wouldn't make him any better off. Okay, it, 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 we, we, if we stop doing stuff, it doesn't make something else get better. Okay, I mean, India's got a very poor population. They still send in missions to Mars and, and whatnot, don't they? There's a greater, bigger picture to think of. Yeah, it, it's not, we'll stop this and this gets better. It doesn't work like that. And we all know that. And we need to stop beating around the bush and playing these games. Not sure we've got any suggestions of a space programme for Tamworth at this point. <coughs> Councillor Jay, and then yourself. Councillor Thank you, Jay. Chair. No, it's, it's Councillor Jay, and then you. Oh, <laughs> Councillor Jay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, obviously we all sympathise with individual cases, um, and it would be fantastic if we, if we could just say, right, we're going to take X million pounds from the budget and we're just going to pay it all the people who are vulnerable this year will pay their heating bill, right? It'd be fantastic. However, once you paid it, that money's gone. So the next year, what are you going to do? You're going to pay again. The next year, pay again. There'll be no money left, right? So what we need to do is make strategic decisions and make strategic spending plans, which over the mid to long term will help people like that, okay? So... Um, <coughs> Things like here, decent homes works, twenty one point three million pounds to increase the standard of homes. Okay. Disabled facilities adaptations over the period three point five million pounds. Um, the high rise fire shoot uh, doors safety, two million pounds. High rise improved ventilation, one point seven million pounds. High rise shoot renewals for the rubber shoots, one hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Damp and mould works outside of the, the funding that we talked about yesterday for hum dehumidifiers for these properties. Half a million pounds spent on there. Uh, sheltered housing, £450,000. Replacement of the flooring in the Erringdon block, £900,000. Uh, an improvement to street light lighting, £250,000. People that walk the street, don't drive, etc. Um, it reduces ASB if you've got better lighting. Uh, and then for general regeneration for affordable housing, £7.25 million. Pounds. So that's what I'm saying. If you read all that out, that is strategic spending to improve the lives of those people mid to long term. We can't just go and pay the bills because then you can't do any of this stuff and longer term is much worse for everybody. Thank you, Chair. Um, just really commenting on what Councillor Summers said. It's all very well to say, go on the website, ring this number. A lot of older people simply cannot use computers. They... Thank you, Councillor Summers. I don't think there was a need for that. One of my old bosses once said, if you ignore a, a problem for long enough, it goes away. And as these people get older, get colder, that problem will go away for you. Very convenient for you, but not so convenient for them. I've said, I've Can said you go words. through the chair, please? Yeah. That's, that's, that's enough. But that's enough. Thank you. Yeah. My point is that um, what provision do we make to actually get the message of where these people can actually make contact to? That is most important, um, to just blandly point to a, a website or a telephone number. Sorry, it doesn't do it for me. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, and I think this serious point you're making is that you get the telephone number from the website, which I think is a problem, isn't it? Councillor Cook and then Councillor Daniel and Councillor Summers, then Councillor Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Um, can, can we, you know, I, I used it as just a pure example earlier about a gas room is heating. I have no point proposed we pay everybody's heating. It was using an example of there's problems out there in society. Let's not get buried in paying for somebody's heating. Uh, just obviously to respond to Councillor Jay with respect, he's listed a lot of things in the capital programme. Uh, the decent homes, it's set out in legislation. We don't have a choice, we've got to do it. Disability facilities grants, it's set out in legislation. We've got to do it. The majority of things he listed are set out in legislation, whether it dates back to a Labour government or a Conservative government or a Lib Dem Conservative coalition. Those things in the capital programme are set out in legislation. The point I was making is that the things we have local choice over, 
seem to be very apt or event centric. That, that's the point I was trying to make. But I'll leave that. That was just responding to that. I've actually got uh, more of a technical question. I've perused the papers and I can't quite wrap my head around this bit. And I'm just hoping it's probably more for Becky than for the Cabinet, to be fair. Obviously, looking at page 36, uh, we have um, table 15, five year base budget forecast running at five pound increase in council tax. And if you come down to the section in grey, you obviously got net expenditure per year for the five year period that we analyse at this point. So, you know, this is obviously local need, which we call base budget. We, we know the general fund budget is usually somewhere between 45 and 50 million, but in reality, every time you're taking out, you know, housing benefit, which we pass bought through, and other things which we pass bought through, it's actually bigger than these figures, but this is what we call local need. So in year, in year one, 24, 25, you've got net expenditure of 8.2 million, but then it jumps to 11.5 in year two, 12.7 in year three, 13.1 in year four, and 13.5 in year five. That's nearly a 40% increase in our net expenditure on the base budget. I just wondered, what is it in there? Because I've tried to look for the figures myself. What makes it jump so rapidly from year to year? I've just wanted to understand it, sorry. Can anyone answer that? Yeah, the increase is because of reduction in the Section 31 grants that we get that are one year only. So we've taken a prudent approach where we don't think that those grants will commence beyond 24, 25. We've taken those out. One of those, for example, is the new homes bonus, which is half a million pounds. That's quite a significant amount. And there's um, at least another 100,000 of other smaller grants that are coming out of there. And also we have a lot of uh, our reserves are invested at the moment. Um, as you would expect, and with the drop in interest rate, that does make a really significant um, difference to the amount of income that we receive. So uh, the drop in income is because we uh, is because largely because we expect a drop in the interest rates on our investments, and obviously uh, some of the big grants that we get for the future high streets fund, for example, mean that some of the amounts that we invest will go down as we spend those grant monies. So that, that accounts for 1.3 million of that increase. And then with the, with the reduction in new homes bonus and similar, that's where the, uh, the other um, difference is. So it's quite significant sums, but it's mostly those two things. Councillor Cook. So yeah, uh, thank you for the answer. I'm still a little bit confused. This is net expenditure. Loss of a grant doesn't change our expenditure. How can our expenditure increase after the loss of a grant? I'm, I'm struggling to wrap my head around that. Because it's net expenditure, so a lot of the income that's coming in is, is, is like you said, is just netted off against the total expenditure. So it includes the income that we receive from, from for example, interest and, and grants. So can I suggest we talk offline about that? Because I think we'll get deep into it. We talk yeah, certainly. I think we'd all be grateful for that, Councillor Cook. Councillor Summers. Thank you. Um, Councillor Thurgood, your slur against me was vile and abhorrent, and I expect an apology from you. Um, it is not convenient for me for people to die off, as you suggest. And I didn't just point people to a bland website. I gave a phone number as well, which is what I'd hope you, as a councillor responsible for helping your ward residents, would do if somebody contacted you about this, other than to say, oh, those nasty Tories aren't paying the eating bill for you. Now, I suggest that if somebody does contact you, you help them appropriately. How do you get your message out there? How do you get people to get in touch with you for help? Or do you just ignore them? Thanks. Um, I beg your pardon? Would you care to re uh, repeat that? No. Okay, so it wasn't very complimentary then, okay. Um, Councillor Summers, every person that contacts me has contacted me over the past eight years. I've helped. I've put myself out in order to help those people. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't let any... Um, resident that, whether they're in my ward or not, um, I don't let them go away without trying to help them. And, and to suggest that um, I may be of that sort of person that would do that, then I find that offensive. In terms of an apology to you, no way. You, 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 well, I think you 
totally rude, to be honest, but that's my opinion. Um, so can, I, can I ask that we stop this line of discussion now? I don't think it... it we shouldn't have gotten it, to... No, I agree, it, but it really does shouldn't. not put this council in a good light. Councillor Jay. Yeah, thank you. I was about to say the same thing. Let's, let's um, you know, take that conversation offline. If we, let's get it back to, to what this is about, right? The budget that we're presenting at the end of the month and to scrutinise it and to look for anything in there that we think will be better or improve for the people of Tamworth. Right? That's why we're here. So let's get back to that. Um, let's get back to positives. So we've touched on, obviously, it's, it's normal to go down rabbit holes on certain items. That's fine. That's what we're here for. But get back to the positives, right? As Councillor Cook said, it's balanced over the period, right? It's balanced over three years. That is booking the trend of other local authorities. That's thank, thanks to lots of work put in by predecessors in, you know, in the past 10, 15 years or 10 years or so. Uh, it's thanks to the officers and the fantastic job they've done. And it's thanks to some ideas we've come from this side as well. So um, it's balanced over three years, okay? Um, council tax increased by under inflation and under the maximum that we're allowed to do, okay? Um, we've increased third sector grants. There's a counter tax reduction scheme. DFG's increased, as I said. Uh, increased events. I see that as a positive to make town of a destination. Let's not play it down. That is a positive. Um, we've increasing assembly room staff to try and sweat that asset. So rather than it being a financial burden, we're trying to get more out of it to stop it being a burden to support us in future years. Uh, we're increasing the size of the street scene team so that we can keep our town looking nice and neat and tidy, even more so than it is at the moment for everyone. That's a priority people have said in the surveys. We're delivering on that. That's going to help all of us. Massive capital programmes. As Councillor Cook said, lots of them are legislated. The speed at which you do some or the other can be adapted. So, you know, we're delivering on that. Um, and not to mention, again, to all the detail, the amount of extra external funding that we've been awarded to be able to deliver even more above and beyond this. So... It's massively positive. So if we can get the tone back to that, you know, anyone watching this might think this is, you know, that there are issues. This is this is a massively positive budget for everyone in our town. For those for those reasons I've mentioned, and probably twenty more that I've not listed. Happy to return to a more positive note. Councillor Daniels. Yeah, that's where I come in. Um, Councillor Jay, points are noted, and I just wanted to echo what Councillor Cook said earlier about legislation and what we heard earlier about grants and interest rates. There are things which we as a council can't control, but we all of us in the room tonight are bringing our different ideas, our different experiences to the budget as we scrutinise it. We're listening to one another and emotions are high because we want to do well for the town and we come with things that we know and don't know. And so we're listening to one another. We may look at it from different angles, but ultimately this is about getting the best cost for the residents of the town so they're helped and supported. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Daniels. Councillor Jay. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for the comments there. Just one thing on there, obviously we, we can't control interest rates and all that stuff, obviously. What we can control uh, is the scenarios that are used in the budget and they're conservative, prudent scenarios. Um, we've not gone for best case, it's all, you know, all going to be shiny over the next few years. We've gone for conservative, prudent scenarios in here. So again, that's just another thing to show that, um, you know, it's a robust budget. Are there any other questions or comments? Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Sorry, another finance question. Uh, don't really mind if it's Councillor Jay or the 151 officer. Um, I think the answer is going to be pretty straightforward, and just obviously for my benefit. Obviously, again, looking at page 36 on the net financing, obviously we've got revenue support grant. Um, we've got five, five years' worth of figures on the revenue support grant. In my knowledge, it's very rare for the government to give you a five-year settlement. Is some of this guesswork, or is it, you know, the LGA's best projections? I just wondered how we arrived at actual figures. Thank you. Um, yes, so the revenue support grant and other grants, the funding settlement is issued just for one year at the moment, pending the election next year. So after that, we're hoping to get a longer-term settlement. So... With, with some of the grants like revenue support grant, clearly we know that's likely to carry on and we've taken our, our best estimate of what will happen. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some of the other grants that are one year we have taken out as precautionary 
so so that um because well, we don't know what's going to happen beyond those so so those drop those grants have dropped out but your business rate income and your revenue support grant are fairly predictable at this stage obviously until the um, business rate resets and the fair funding review which we've assumed will happen in 26 27 so that's why some of the funding drops from that year onwards So hopefully the last one for me, Mr Chairman, um, as I must have said in this chamber for the last five years, it's the one that scares me for this town is the fairer funding review. If you look at our nine and a half million hole at the end of year five, which in reality is 10 million, time you have the half a million we're supposed to have left at any given period. If you remove the fairer funding review to strip this council of its business rate income or its additional business rate income on top of baseline, our budget balances for five years. I and mean, you'd have so much additional cash to do some of the things we've all spoke about in here if the government cancelled fairer funding review. That is our danger. It's our biggest problem. Do you want to respond to that or, or not? Well, just to say the same, I've just built, I've built those figures in and you are right, the funding does go down from that year onwards, but um, it's still some way, some way off and it may be beyond 26, 27. I think it's part of a bigger funding issue that the government have to address after the election. So. Thank you, Chair. I think it's um, it's probably our, one of our biggest um, risks as an organisation is the central government funding. Uh, we've been here, certainly um, in, in my knowledge, for seven years where there's been, there's going to be a, a fairer funding review, there's going to be a business rates reset. It hasn't happened yet. And we've been very fortunate and that's, that's kept us going with a very good, a very well balanced budget all throughout that time. I think time is starting to perhaps run out for us because government, new government, um, end of this year, early next year at the latest, they're going to have to do something with the um, with, with the fairer funding review, regardless of, of whichever party is, is successful. Um, that I think is going to be would be very different conversations here in perhaps two years' time, when the outcome of any review is uh, is known. It may be positive, it may not. Um, the optimist in me says that you know I think local government has a very strong role in uh, in supporting vulnerable and uh, delivering local services, but you know it's it, it's a financial challenge and we're not alone in that. So if that's helpful to the committee. Thank you. Any other questions? Now, as this is the first time I've chaired one of these, and I wasn't expecting to chair it. Um, what are we asked, being asked to do at this point? Now that's the cabinet. What are we being asked to do? Chair, really just to, um, if there's any um, recommendations from uh, non-cabinet members that wish to be uh, considered as part of this process that haven't been raised uh, or addressed already. So it's really just come up with a, with a series of recommendations. Uh, ready to go forward to um, the 27th of February full council, if there are any. If there are any, yeah. I guess it follows from that. Are there any, Councillor Cook? I don't have anything, anything this evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm working on a few uh, that obviously will probably have to go to the final meeting in February, but I won't do it blind on the leader because I've you have sat in his chair. I know how unfair it is to be blindsided on the night, but I've got some thoughts, things I'd like to see change. But I'll we will communicate with the leader and not blindsiding him. And I would make the same um, the same input from the Labour group. We will not come up with something that you're not aware of, Councillor J. Thank you. Um, as we've done all along this process, you know, involvement from from all uh, sides of the chamber is always welcome. Um, obviously, the the meeting to approve the budget is right up to the wire for when we legally need to approve it. So my suggestion, and I am totally flexible and open to days, times, online, face-to-face, -face, whatever is needed. If you've got some suggestions that haven't been raised in any other meetings we've had, let's get them on the table. Let's discuss them in advance. If they're legitimate and we can do something with it, we get them in. If they're on the night, it's a bit tricky um, when the, we need to approve it. So yeah, welcome input. If we can, let's let's get it done up, up up front. Thank you. Right. Is there any other business that we need to to deal with this evening? That's it then. 
So um, can I now close the meeting? I would now close the meeting and thank you all for your participation. I do hope some of the di disagreements that have been articulated here can be resolved offline, because I think it's in the interest of the people of Tamworth that we do so. Many thanks, everybody.